John Roberts, the man who would be and very likely will be the next Chief Justice of the United States. If you've looked at what I've done uh, since I took the judicial oath, uh, that should convince you that I'm not an ideologue. But what is he? The Supreme Court nominee John Roberts was gliding through confirmation hearings so smooth that even Judiciary Committee Democrats were wondering aloud whether they should confirm the president's choice. For, this, for his part, the president's choice resisted all ideological labels except the label of lawyer. I don't think you want judges who will decide cases before them under the law on what they think is good simply good policy for America. There are legal questions there. And my point is simply this, that in representing clients, uh, in serving as a lawyer, it's not my job to decide whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. The job of the lawyer is to articulate the legal arguments on behalf of the client. Which sounds perfectly logical, Pete, except it left a lot of questions unanswered, didn't it? Many questions, which uh, was very frustrating to the Democrats, and yet they found themselves hesitating about whether to vote against him, and I think there are two reasons for this. One is, uh, I think there's universal feeling in that committee that he is intellectually equipped to do the job of Chief Justice, and secondly, many of the Democrats appeared to conclude that he is less a doctrinaire conservative than he appeared to be as a young lawyer in the Reagan administration writing all those memos that based, they asked Based questions. on what? Well, so, some of the answers that they liked. For example, he said he believes in the constitutional right to privacy, that he agrees with Supreme Court decisions that allowed, that struck down laws against contraceptives, decisions that are the uh, groundwork, the, the bedrock of the Roe v. Wade decision. Uh, he said he finds that, he, he, he appeared to go out of his way to say, without saying it, I'm not going to be Antonin Scalia. I'm not going to be Clarence Thomas. I believe in looking at legislative history to try to figure out what Congress was up to. I'm not an originalist. I don't think you go back and look at the conditions that prevailed at the time of the country when constitutional provisions were adopted. He liked the way Sandra Day O'Connor approached the issue of affirmative action. He said, you've got to look at real world problems and how things are affected and how it affects people. And he said, uh, this is the word he used, the phrase he used a couple of times. He said, if you want to know what kind of a justice I would be, look at what kind of a judge I've been, and if you look at my opinions, 50 or so, you would find that I was not an ideologue. Now, clearly, he didn't say everything the Democrats liked. They, I think they were still very concerned about his views on civil rights. There was lots of talk about whether his opinions have really changed on the Voting Rights Act. I think some senators were concerned about whether he has changed his views on appeals in death penalty cases, especially as we come in with new technologies like DNA, and how do you accommodate that? Uh, when the preference seems to be against people filing successive appeals to a lot try of questions, over and over but again. I watched every minute of these hearings and I didn't hear a lot of answers. He set out not to answer a lot of those questions. He clearly has been uh, not probably the least responsive nominee, but he, uh, he sort of set a line for himself. He says, I've read the uh, tr transcripts of previous nominees' yeah. confirmation hearings, and I just think it's, you know, here's this guy of principle again. Uh, I just think it's inappropriate to say anything about something that might come before the court. But if he says things that uh, sound at least somewhat reasonable and reassuring to Democrats, how come conservative groups are still uh, <laughs> totally enthusiastic? You're not hearing well, the criticism of those responses. Do they not believe? Them? Well, I think, uh, I think part of it is, uh, and this, the, the, the opposite side of this, it still concerns Democrats, too, is the company he keeps. I mean, he has all these supporters. Uh, I think their view is, at least I talked to some of them this week, uh, they think he probably would not reason as a Scalia and a Thomas would, but that he's still likely maybe to come out where they would. Now, there was disappointment on both sides about Roe v. Wade. Uh, the, the liberal groups, the uh, uh, people, uh, Planned Parenthood groups like that, were disappointed he didn't come right out and say, I would not overrule Roe v. Wade. It, unrealistic thing, think that he would. But there were some of the Republicans on the committee who I think were a little disappointed that he wouldn't even start down the path with them about, you know, when does life begin questions. He didn't want to go there either. So there's a little nervousness on their side too. You heard the, the Democrats actually thinking out loud at one point, <laughs> kind of vacillating, going back and forth. Where, where do you think this is going to go when this actually goes to the floor now? Well, if we believe, and I, I called all their offices today and asked them if any of them have decided yet, and <laughs> the answer was that they probably wouldn't be decided. 
Patrick Leahy wants to go to his cabin in Vermont and think about it. Or they wouldn't be telling you in any case. Uh, well, they should. I told them I was going to be on here tonight. This would be a good, <laughs> this time, be a good time to say it. Uh, I think that they have to really decide it's not about John Roberts. It's somewhat about John Roberts. And I, I really do think they, they're thinking to themselves, as Orrin Hatch said, if we can't vote for this guy, we can't vote for any Republican nominee. And they realize that. But it's, it's really about the next nomination. And they're trying to decide, does a tough vote in committee, no Democrats go to, for John Roberts, does that say to the White House, see, we're going to be really tough or does it does it say that uh, you know if you show a little leg on John Roberts you say see we might work with you on a more moderate nominee so so what kind of nominee who are they looking at any specifics yet on on who would replace Sandra Day O'Connor no and you know the president has said he's going to meet with senators uh, uh, next week as he did the last time we're not going to get a nominee till after he's confirmed but we don't know who that is. We don't have any names at all. Oh, we have names. The same old names. We don't know. The names we heard we before. Clue. The we same heard names. Some of the same names. Mel Martinez, Larry Thompson, Edith uh, Clement, Edith Clement, uh, Priscilla Owen. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna put them all in a crystal ball, and we're gonna bring you back and have you guess for us. How's okay. that? Yeah. Fine. You thank me for that. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>